2023 general elections in view, lessons from the United Kingdom. After steering the course of a turbulent United Kingdom economy as Prime Minister, Elizabeth Truss resigned from the exalted office she sought and fought very hard to occupy for 44 days. It is a high responsibility and definitely honorable thing that she admitted mistakes and inability to deliver on the mandate and resigned. This indeed indicates how she valued the nation above her personal interests. Following Liz Truss' resignation, Rishi Sunak, a member of the British Parliament and Chancellor of the Exchequer, who appeared to be more prepared for the position and has a more realistic plan that captures today's United Kingdom economic reality, was later appointed as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. In fact, Rishi Sunak emerged as the first British Prime Minister of Asian Hindi, that is Indian descent. The lessons that could be deduced from this event and applied domestically are as those. For a government to succeed, it must first meet the criteria for good governance and be empathic towards the needs of the people. With the problems facing the country, it is accurate to see poor leadership has brought our current problems on us. For instance, the recent ban by the United Arab Emirates proves that our foreign policies and relations are being disrespected, and this is the effect of failed diplomatic relations. Not only that, insecurity and natural disasters like flooding top the litany of pestilence that brought about by negligence and poor leadership. Democracy is a government for the people, by the people, and it is high time we as we the people take this definition to heart by getting it right at the polls next year. Those at the helm of affairs should respect the will of the people. It is important for government to listen to the queries, outcries of the masses and strike a balance in decision making. In order to build or rebuild our nation from the bottom up, we need to have empathic leaders who understand what true development is and can utilize human capacity for the positive change we need. This leader can be anyone irrespective of their ethno-religious identities. Our ethnic or religious diversity should not be our divider, rather it should be our common strength and balance. Any Nigerian, irrespective of gender, religion or tribe, can aspire and be ch given a chance where necessary to lead effectively. Let me conclude on this note by quoting John Calvin Maxwell, an American author, speaker, and pastor. A leader can give up just anything except final responsibility. Political candidates, beware. Right. <laughs> they say everything, think, everything rises and falls on leadership. Yeah. You know, everything does. And this is, this is quite interesting because um, there's nothing more important for Nigerians and Nigeria right now than what's going on, than, you know, even maybe a bit more than what we're going through. What is more important is what where we're going to, yeah. know, which is the, the the elections in 2023, and we are where we are so far, maybe because of the kind of choices we made the last time. But my main concern is I don't see us making choices that are any different. What I'm are seeing. you a prophet of doom? You know, I remember <laughs> a long time ago when. In when after 2015, well, there about 2016, it was New Year. Someone called us on the radio and started saying, you know, let's talk. What, what would we envisage for the year? And a prophet of boom was <laughs> saying, <laughs> prophet of boom was saying, you know, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. And I said, mm -mm. you know, you know, the thing is, when something doesn't go in the way we expect, we think it's doom because someone is trying to say. You know, the, the, the positive motivation movement is a bit too much, you know. <laughs> you know. So this is what I believe. I believe in facing the right truth, the, the real situation, while projecting your expectation on it. You know, what I am seeing. We are, we, we are projecting too much positivity. But what I am seeing, you know, but I'm sure Nigerians are seeing it, that it's, 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 it's a dicey situation. You know, it doesn't look like we're making any, the, the choices we're making are any different. Because we're still fighting, is a Muslim Muslim ticket? Is it Northern Muslim ticket? Is it, you Tribe know, religion. that's what we are. The young people want a young person. 
you know, the whole people in the North say you can't vote a non-Northerner. That's what's going on. That's the conversation is going on right now. It's not, oh, you can't vote a non-Muslim. Uh -uh. You can't vote anyone who is non-Muslim and non-Northerner. So, you know, we're, we're not any different from where we came yeah. in 2000 and, what was that? 2019 and, like, 19 and, 19 yeah. and 15. We're, we're, we're yeah. not any different. 15. Uh, okay, so uh, let uh, me get you straight. You are not a prophet of doom. You're only following the indexes based on what I'm looking and at. indications. I, yeah, I'm so, so basically, yeah, I think, I think basically what he's saying, I mean, if you think, if you think about the, the decision-making matrix, right, there's a decision-maker. There's, there's people that are involved in making decisions. Decisions will be made, and then there's the consequences, right? So one of the problems that we have is we don't want to be responsible for our decisions, mm. but we want to be responsible for the consequences. Unfortunately, right. unfortunately, the only choice you have is the decisions that you make. You cannot choose the consequences. Right. Because your decisions would have consequences. Decisions yeah. have consequences. Which is beyond your control. So which is beyond your control. The control that you have stops our decision making. Which is what he's saying. The fact that we've spent seven, it'll be eight years by next year. Seven and a half. Seven and a half years, right? Haven't made certain decisions. Have we actually, as a people, moved away from where we are, where we were mentally, yeah. when we made those decisions? Now, that's one part of it. The other part of it, decision makers at the time, the people that made those decisions at the time, are they the same people that made the same decisions at this time? Because you want to ask yourself, you know, they say, uh, insanity, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and creating different results. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if the same set of people are the people making decisions, if the decision making falls on the same parameters and the same indexes, you would have the same results. Yep. There's no. It's not so, so it's not a prophecy. It's exactly. just it's just indices. It's just projections. It's just mathematics. One plus one will continue to be two until something changes to the second one. Right. Either it becomes half or it becomes two. It's right. simple mathematics. So if people, if a certain people make certain decisions every four years, you have to change two things for something. So either you change decision-making process. Right. So they can make a different set of decisions. Right. Or you change the decision-making people. Completely. So they make a different set of decisions. Right. So it, that's, that's what I think he's saying. That's what I'm yeah. hearing from what he's saying. Yeah. So, like you said, there are lessons to be learned from everywhere. Right. Well, in conclusion, I believe right. very strongly that every nation must find a kind of system of government that works for them. I don't believe that one size fits all. It's almost like what I said about education. Mm. You gather 20 people in a room, Expect them to think the same way. Expect them to take the same courses, to pass the same exams, the same system of teaching. 20 different people with 20 different brains, 20 different orientation, 20 different backgrounds, 20 different trainings. So we create this monoversity. Right. <laughs> versus a multiversity. I mean, it's right. not even a university, to be very honest with you. It's even a monoversity. We need to start creating multiversities. Right. Right. That have people get rid of the box and start to think outside the box. Right. Right, so that, that's so. I, I mean, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I think that we're, it's going to take us a while. It's you going to take a right. certain generation, but I still hope that or a certain I, I think, demography of people yeah. to shift from decision making process. And I, but I and believe that set of people next next time round might be, be better than what the last time around. Be, hopefully, it'll be better. Except if like it's a domino effect. Some of the things that happen now will still stumble on and, the next. You know, yeah, well, and they, they usually do. Well, well, you know, they usually, usually do. Well, you usually. gentlemen, you, you've spoken very well. I get your point. It's good to know that after all, you're not a prophet of doom. You mean well, <laughs> but you are following the recent current realities. Yeah. yeah. So we we'll only just um, reflect on this, that we don't have, you can make excuse for everything, but not for responsibility. Right. We as citizens, the masses, when we come out to vote, let's That's be key. responsible for ourselves and our make That's the right choice. And then the candidates and those in government should be responsible for making the right choice and doing the right things. They should not do the wrong things and be found wanting in certain areas yeah. because whatever the consequences that happens, we don't have control choice. by the country control. and it could yeah. be catastrophic if it's not managed properly. Absolutely. So let's take responsibility where necessary. Right. Siege Hazan is next after the break. Just stay with us.